If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to answer this question on your own first before listening on. In part A, in order to calculate the electric flux through the vertical rectangular surface, we want to look at the equation that allows us to calculate electric flux through a surface. And we can see that the electric flux is equal to an integral of a dot product between the electric field vector and this dA vector. Now we'll notice that there is a little circle drawn around the integral. That simply indicates that the integration that we perform is to be taken over the entire surface. So in part A, we're going to be integrating across the entire rectangular surface. We then next want to discuss what this dA represents. And it's known as an area vector. And to understand that, what we're going to do is consider the vertical rectangular surface. Now, it's a little bit hard to see because it's obscured from the perspective of the drawing. But the vertical rectangular surface is located over in this area here. Perhaps we can draw a dotted line to indicate where that vertical rectangular surface is. Now, when it comes to the area vector, what we want to do is draw an arrow that points away from the interior of this triangular box, away from the interior. So if we come over here, what we would have to do, and this is a little hard to see again, we want to draw a vector that's pointing away from the interior. So we would draw an arrow that's pointing in this direction right here. That arrow would be giving us the direction of that area vector. So we can label that dA. Again, make sure you point that away from the interior of the rectangular, excuse me, away from the interior of the triangular box. Now we return back to this dot product and we recall that a dot product can be rewritten. And we're going to do that in order to help us evaluate the integral. So that can be written as the product of the magnitude of the electric field and the area vector multiplied by the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. Now going back to the drawing, we can see that the angle between the area vector, which is pointing to the left, and then the electric field vector, which is pointing to the right, would be 180 degrees. Essentially, dA is pointing this way, and E is pointing that way. And we can clearly see that the angle between them is indeed 180 degrees. So that's going to be theta, and we can go ahead and plug that in. Now, of course, the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, so we can make that substitution. Now, we can assume that the magnitude of the electric field is a constant value, and because it's a constant, we can actually remove negative e to the outside of our integral. And finally, we just have to integrate dA, and of course, the integral of dA would just be A. It would be the area of this vertical rectangular surface. So we're left with negative e multiplied by a, which is the area of that vertical rectangular surface. Now we know both of these values. The magnitude was given as 7.8 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. And then for the area of the vertical rectangular surface, we simply have to use the area of a rectangle, which of course is the length of the rectangle multiplied by its width. Let's make sure to convert the centimeters into meters. So we'll go ahead and multiply these two values right here. And when we work this out, and again, by the way, notice again the area is length times the width for that rectangular surface. When we multiply this out, we're going to get negative 2,340, and then we can see the unit would be newtons multiplied by meters squared, because we have meters times meters, and then that's all over coulombs. So this would be the correct answer for part A of the question. Now on to part B to calculate the flux through the slanted surface. What we've done is we've come over here and drawn a different perspective of this triangular box. And we're sort of looking at the box from this angle right here. And we would see this right triangle from the side. And we have the electric field that's pointing to the right, as shown in the original diagram. And then we have the area vector, which is pointing away from the interior of that triangular box. Notice that when we draw the dA vector, we have to make sure it's perpendicular to the surface that we are trying to calculate the electric flux through. So we've drawn a little bit of a right angle right there and shown that dA is perpendicular. We need to find the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector, and we've marked that theta. We were told that this angle was 60 degrees. And since this is 90, that would make this angle 30 degrees. 
what we'll do is extend DA in this manner right here. This is still a 90 degree angle and you can see that we've carved out a second triangle. Perhaps we can color it so that it's more obvious. So that triangle right there. And since that's 90 and this is 30, that means this angle right here is going to be 60 degrees. Now you learned in a geometry course that when you have two parallel lines that are cut by a third line, then these two angles, they're called corresponding angles, are going to be equal to one another. If you look carefully, you have the electric field line that is parallel to the bottom of this triangle. We then have a third line that's cutting through. And since this is 60 degrees, then this corresponding angle up here also will be 60 degrees. So in short, we're going to be plugging in 60 for theta. We can go ahead and remove the electric field to the outside since it has a constant value. In fact, we can remove the cosine of 60 to the outside as well since that's a constant. And then we're left with the integral of dA. As we noted earlier, the integral of dA is just the area, A. Now, for the area, we need the area of that slanted surface, which is basically another rectangle. We have one dimension of the rectangle, it's 30 centimeters. What we don't have is the length of that rectangle, this dimension right here. But we can figure that out by using that brown right triangle on the side. If we look carefully, we have that 60 degree angle. We could say, since it's a right triangle, that the cosine of that 60 degree angle would be equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse of that brown right triangle. If we look carefully, the adjacent to that 60 degree angle is the 10 centimeters, or 0.10 meters. What we need is the hypotenuse, because that represents the length of that rectangular slanted surface. So we'll just call that L for length. And if we solve this equation for the length, we would get 0.10 meters over the cosine of 60 degrees. So that will serve as the length, and the width is clearly indicated as being 0.3 meters. So we can use those two values to find the area. We'll also plug in the electric field. Conveniently, the cosine of the angle cancels out, and when we punch this into our calculator, we're going to get positive 2,340 newton meter squared per coulomb. So this is the correct answer to part B of the question. Now finally to part C, to get the electric flux through the entire surface of the box, what we would have to do is add the fluxes that we've calculated for the vertical rectangular surface, which was on the side, the slanted surface, but then technically also three more surfaces because we have this side of the triangular box, we have the opposite side of the triangular box, which is right here, and then we have the bottom of the triangular box. Now it turns out, however, that those fluxes will be zero. And let's take a quick look at why that is. Let's consider this triangular side right here of the box. The DA vector would be pointing perpendicular and away from the interior. Now, hopefully we can see that the angle between that area vector and the electric field vector, which is pointing straight away to the right, would be 90 degrees. The same thing is true over here. If we drew the DA vector, the angle between that area vector and the electric field would also be 90 degrees. And then for the bottom, again, same story. We draw an area vector pointing straight down and the angle between that vector and the electric field vector is 90. Now the cosine of 90, of course, is zero. So if this term becomes zero, then of course the entire electric flux is going to be zero through multiplication. So the fluxes of those three surfaces will be zero. That means all we have to do is add the two fluxes that we found earlier. And if you recall, those were negative 2340 and positive 2340, which of course add up to zero Newton meters squared per coulomb. So this would be the correct answer to part C.